Welcome to the Horror Hangout, a podcast where two bearded film fans watch the 50 best horror movies ever and talk about them. My name is Luke Condo with a K, and I'm joined by Mr. Ben Errington. How's it going, dude? Are you alright? It's going well. Yes. It's going fairly well. Good. What, is, what have you been up to this past hour, half hour, ten minutes? What are you this past half hour and ten minutes? Yeah. That's a real specific time frame for you to ask me what I was doing. I'm curious. Uh, I, ate, I, ate, I ate some chicken. That was nice. Did you? Um, it was a massive, massive chicken breast, you know? Like, sometimes you get chicken breast, you're like, this is a monstrosity. Was it reanimated at all, in any way? It, it, it wasn't reanimated, but I reckon if I put my mind to it, <laughs> I could probably reanimate it. It was the perfect size breast of a chicken to uh, to reanimate. Lovely, ever, lovely. Ever so juicy. What about you? What have you been eating? And <laughs> I had beans and cheese on toast, mature cheddar cheese, uh-huh. a bit of salt and pepper on top, a bit of cumin in the beans to spice it up a bit. This is um, this turmeric. is Hester Blumenthal stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, turmeric stuff. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I like to get the beans a bit spiced up, like a you know a bit of pizzazz to them. I like to I like to get my Frankenstein on in the in the lab. I mean the kitchen, and um, oh, right. <laughs> it's alive, you know. It's alive. So spicy, so spicy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh. uh, I will just quickly say as well, if you can see, uh, Oscar is with us. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, what a what a rainy day in Manchester, eh? It's actually been super sunny recently. Um, oh. Until until today. Until it's Halloween very it's very it's, it's very rainy in Bristol as well. Ever yeah. so ever so ever so miserable. Yeah. Is I quite like it. Though? Yeah. Okay, so uh, <laughs> last time we talked about the Babadook, um, but tonight we're not talking about one film, but we're talking about two films. We're talking about. The Universal Classics, 1931's Frankenstein and 1935's Bride of Frankenstein. And, uh, hey, Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> hey. For those listening, the cat just sort of got in on the action there. Uh, so, um, how, so I think we're going to do it a little bit differently today. So the films are actually, so the sequel, number 38, um, is the next one on the list. That's Bride of Frankenstein. And then this is on the Empire list. And then 37 is Frankenstein. The, the first film but we're just going to talk about them together because it may, it'd be so weird to do the sequel and then the then the original which is the order in which i watch the films which kind of messed me up a bit but um <laughs> okay so uh do you want to tell us a bit about frankenstein first of all yeah no problem so frankenstein is a 1931 american horror monster film from universal pictures directed by james whale and adapted from the play by peggy webling which in turn is a is a <laughs> is adapted from the adapted, novel based on yeah. the, I almost said ejaculated based on the <laughs> same novel based on a novel of the same name by Mary Shelley about a scientist and his assistant who dig up corpses to build a man animated by electricity but his assistant accidentally gives the creature an abnormal murderer's brain accidentally as you would uh, the resulting what? monster is portrayed by Boris Karloff in the film so that's Frankenstein 1931 and then it was followed by are we going to discuss well, yeah, so let me uh, just quickly do the Empire thing first. Okay, okay. So, so here's what Empire had to say um, about Frankenstein. Uh, Jack Pierce created several iconic makeups for Universal in the 30s and 40s, but by far the most indelible is a flat headed, bolt necked Frankenstein's monster of a thousand subsequent parodies. It took Boris Karloff, however, to inhabit this makeup as a tangible character, acting his way out from behind the grease paint and mortician's wax to deliver a nuanced portrait of a childlike creature prone to rage but also capable of great tenderness. You need only compare Karloff's monster to the later versions attempted by uh, Lon Chaney Jr. and Bella Lugosi to see the extent of Karloff's achievement. Uh, the clumsily lurching art caricature of popular misconception owes everything to those performances and nothing at all to Karloff's tragically bewildered victim. Uh, so that's the first one. Yeah, sounds pretty good. <laughs> what about the uh, Bride of Frankenstein? The so Bride of Frankenstein, the sequel... Um, that's not the official title, it's just called Bride of Frankenstein, is a 1935 American science fiction horror film. Bit of a slightly different description there. Uh, what, the the first, first, what did he describe the first one as? Um, American horror monster film. Okay, and then this, Amer- and this one was one a, science American fiction. science fiction horror film. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, so the first sequel to Frankenstein, um, as with the first film, Bride of Frankenstein was directed by James Whale and so was Boris Karloff again as the monster. The sequel features uh, Elsa Lanchester in the dual role of Mary Shelley and the monster's mate at the end of the film. 
Colin Clive reprises his role from the first film as Henry Frankenstein. Um, so basically the plot is Mary Shelley reveals the main character of her novels survived. Dr. Frankenstein, goaded by an even madder scientist, builds his monster a mate. A best mate. Lonely, isn't he? Yeah. The Empire, uh, the Empire write-up for Bride of Frankenstein is actually really similar. It says, James Whale's sequel to his original uh, Frankenstein reunites the director of Boris Karloff's classic monster and with Cl- Colin Clive's hapless scientist, this time tasked with creating a mate for the creature. As before, there's immense pathos in the monster's plight, ultimately rejected by his stunning, shock-haired bride. But there's more mischievous wit in the second outing, largely thanks to Ernest Weissiger's cherishably wash- waspish... Dr. Pretorius, yes, he observes dryly at the reveal that the monster can now speak. There have been developments. Um, yeah, okay, Was- so. Waspish. Waspish. I find that was a perfect like description for him. It's good. Yeah. I like it. It's, it's strange. I don't think I've ever heard anyone described as that, but I like waspish. it. Waspish. Uh, oh, you're so- ever, is it ever so waspish you are, mate? Oh, steady on. Leave me alone. Leave is, it out. Is it an insult? Or is it a. I kind of see it as a bit of a compliment. Because... I don't know, because wasps are bastards. <laughs> <laughs> we are bastards yeah now all bastards. i don't know i think it, i think to me it means like they know what they want and they want to sting some it like <laughs> <laughs> i know what i want i want to sting some it <laughs> okay both actually both films are 100 percent fresh on rotten tomatoes get out of town i'm joking get back joking. In, get back into town please um both films have 7.9 out of 10 on imdb so they're both they're both regarded as like classics, but I mean, Ben, what did you think to the old Frankenstein? The old Frankenstein. Because um, let me just uh, preface this: because you hate any movie <laughs> that was released before <laughs> 1971, <laughs> 60, 69. 69. Sorry, possibly. Ben's. Quite I don't know. Maybe that's my cliff edge. Usually, yeah. Um, I, I quite like these films. I think they're pretty good. Um, you could tell when they're so iconic. For yeah. for films in the thirties, like they don't feel quite as old as that. No, do they really? When you think about it, nineteen thirty, bloody hell, that was a long time ago. And uh, these films, they, I mean, obviously, yeah, they've aged quite considerably. But <laughs> the story and a lot of the characters on show and. Uh, a lot of the elements are still pretty solid, you know. I quite liked, I I quite liked a lot of the stuff. But then I find equally find a lot of it quite frustrating, quite annoying. Uh, yeah. There are some characters, there are some characters in it which I thought were completely and utterly pointless. I, I don't know what it is, why they were in there, or what what they were trying to do. It's almost like a film. Some films of this, not this necessarily this era, but like, it's almost like they've got. They feel like I can't be a genre film. I have to cater to everybody. Yeah, and everybody yeah, likes yeah. a laugh. Everybody likes a laugh, so we're gonna have to include a com- a comedic character. You you got like carry on moments, don't you? Like it's almost yeah. like someone's walked in from a carry on film and they just like so in the hammer film it was that guy who put yeah. uh he put like a, a booby trap in the middle of the road or something like that. Um and I think I know what you mean in Frankenstein, are you talking about Baron von Frankenstein, the dad? Yeah. So tra- so Baron von Frankenstein just looks like any old bloke they pulled out of a pub to play yeah, this character yeah. it was just like he wasn't acting he was just he was, i mean he was chewing that scenery big time yeah like, not yeah. in a good way and it was <laughs> it was ridiculous it was almost like people pe- pe- look other actors on screen when he was talking their eyes would go dead as if they were saying this person is in a, is in a film with me how yeah. on earth can this i be person, getting better? as soon as the camera starts rolling he's gonna grab my ass and everyone <laughs> thought that. <laughs> everyone, the boys and the girls. He's gonna <laughs> say something rude, and he's gonna touch my buttocks. That guy. It was just, it was just bizarre. Like this Baron von Frankenstein do was, was, yeah. uh, I don't know. And then obviously we get someone, like, someone in a similar vein in Bride of Frankenstein, who's like some sort of scullery maid, or what would you? Was... <laughs> I've no idea what she is, uh, but she looks. <laughs> is it, is she... <laughs> I don't know what, what I don't know what it was. I couldn't tell what it was. I couldn't even tell. It's it's, it's yeah. weird, though, wasn't it? like I didn't mean like I feel like those films nowadays. It's like you, horror films. Like uh, you come see a horror film, and it's just going to be horror. That's what we're focusing on. But back then, it was like we're, we're only bringing one film out every two years, three years, whatever. So we've got to we've got to sell to everyone. It's got to be like a big family piece. As as harsh as some of the scenes in this film were. Yeah, it's almost like this comic relief 
um, I mean, it's fine to have com- in, in a lot of films. If there's a, little, a few moments of comic relief, you know, it helps. It helps kind of break it up. It helps mm. break up that tension. It helps s- sort of sort of pu- push the scenes along. Yeah. But yeah, the Bride of Frankenstein. There was a, there was a scullery maid woman who yeah. was so OTT, so over the top, screeching and screaming and whooping in delight. For do you know what I mean? It was just yeah. Just do you know what I mean? Oh. I don't, I know exactly what you mean. Do you think it's similar to like how in like modern day films, someone might just make a, a little dry witty remark? It'll be like about I'm better not tweet it or like I don't know, something stupid like that, like uh, that's very relevant yeah. today. Do you feel like that back then was the, a similar sort of idea? Like it's just a little bit of humour. It's a witty remark, but the, the way they used to do that is to have these sort of larger than life characters like threaded into the film. Yeah, possibly, but it was it was insufferable. Like when these people <laughs> on screen, I find myself just like, oh, for God's sake, yeah. get out of it. it. Reminded me that we all know that person. You know what I mean? They, they got a good sense of humour. They get a laugh, but as soon as there's like three or four people around, they become the centre of attention. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey! Look at this. <laughs> it, reminded, <laughs> it, it reminded me of that, and I was just like, oh, yeah. fuck. get get on with the film, for God's sake. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, I uh, I've never seen either of these films before. I think the first thing that struck me... Okay, so I watched Bride of Frankenstein last week and then I watched Frankenstein this week because I didn't realise they were like one and two in reverse on the list. I didn't see Frankenstein was coming up afterwards, so kind of messed myself up. But when I watched Frankenstein, I've got to say, I thought visually it was pretty cool. Like, I love like the whole... Um, like the painted uh, clouds and stuff and the, yeah. and the painted uh, uh, set pieces. Is. Yeah, yeah, it looks amazing. And then there's like loads of scenes you look at and you think, I've, I've seen that image copied in like horror comics and uh, like various illustrations and, and tattoos and pastiched in various ways. But I think it was, re- I think it looked really beautiful. Um, the Frankenstein monster, yeah, it's full of pathos. It's um, it's a lot more affecting than I, I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be kind of lame, but it really wasn't. The, then again, Brad Frankenstein, I thought it was a little bit lame, but the first one I thought it was quite, it actually felt like it could have been not made from body parts, but like he felt like he could have been like a real, like when he first woke up, I was like, oh, that's actually quite. It feels like he has just woke up and it's just like a dead <coughs> brain. It's it's kind of it's kind of effective. I thought it was really good. Yeah, I think in Frankenstein, I kind of felt like I understood more about the character of Frankenstein, what yeah. he was supposed to be, what he represented, rather than in Bride of Frankenstein, where it felt like it was kind of just taking some of the ideas from the original yeah. and running with them that he's just meandering about yeah. killing people um killing people in the same sort of way every single time he kills someone which yeah. is in the lenny from of mice and men way which yeah, is yeah, exactly, doesn't yeah. quite doesn't quite know his own strength yeah. wants wants friends wants to be sort of interact with people but obviously people are scared shitless of him so they scream and he's like shut up shut up yeah so you know what? so i've never been a fan i've never read the frankenstein novel uh but i've never been a fan of frankenstein as a character I've seen a lot of remakes and seen a lot of like, I think there's a TV show at one point and I've seen him show up in various things, but I've, the cartoons and stuff, but I've never thought he was a cool, like a good character until I saw this. And now, until I saw Frankenstein anyway, now I kind of realise what the whole, the, what the, the reason, the appeal, like I can see why people like him. Um, and I it was, think it, he's got a whole sort of in, King Kong sort of vibe. Um, vibe. <laughs> yeah. Like he was a tragic beast, like you feel sorry for him, and uh, yeah, I thought mm. it was good. Yeah, um, yeah, strange, really. Again, going back to the sorry, the scenario of Bride, uh, Frankenstein and Frankenstein's monster. Obviously, he's not called Frankenstein. Yes, he's Frank- he's, doc- yeah. he's, doc- he's Doctor Frankenstein's monster. But it felt like in these films, they never quite committed to that. No, because some they- people, some people call him Frankenstein, the monster. Yeah. Yeah, and not just that. Like when Bride of Frank, when Bride of Frankenstein is created, they say it's the Bride of Frankenstein. You'd think Doctor Frankenstein would be like, "What, what? what me? Yeah. Huh? What? <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, it's... <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I. I, um... I mean, because obviously that is confusing. I, I we... noticed that. And I even noted it, and then I thought, I don't think they would have done that. I'm not going to say that out loud <laughs> on the podcast. They wouldn't have said something stupid like that on the actual film. But now you yeah. said it, I'm like, no, they did. <laughs> It's it not, did. It was. It was like, a oh, bit it's Frankenstein. It's not. It just. It was just a bit inconsistent when you think about it. It was just a bit like um, you'd think the film at least would 
be able to commit one way or the other. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah. but yeah. It didn't. So I guess that's so that's why it's so confusing in pop culture when people go, "Oh, it's Frankenstein." No, no, it's not. It's Frankenstein's monster because the actual films Frankenstein don't even know. Nobody knows. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, the key players in both of the films we've got Colin Clive as Henry Frankenstein, Doctor Frankenstein, Boris Karloff as the monster, otherwise known as Frankenstein, and uh, <laughs> and then there's a uh, various other characters in both of them. Um, I think Elizabeth, his wife, pops up in, in both. Yeah, um, uh, Fritz, the hunchback dude. Uh, who we get, who we guess this is this is uh, early representation of Igor. Yeah, I'm assuming. Also, is the same actor in Bride of Frankenstein as well as some sort of like t- assistant? Well, he I is. swear it was the same. Oh, I okay. swear it was the That's same. The guy, yeah. the guy who played Fritz was the same as there was an assistant in Bride of Frankenstein as well, and I swear it's the same guy. But That's quite interesting. I um, do know what you mean, actually. Uh, I was trying to think what his name is because uh, I was reading about him. He's like a character actor. He does lots of Lots of those sort of characters. So yeah. Dwight Fry is the guy's name, and big bad Dwight Fry, and he was in Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein. Yeah, yeah so he was, he was. Yeah, so he's Fritz in Frankenstein and Bride and in Bride of Frankenstein he's Carl. who's he's sort of like a still on the set. Oh, we're going to be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's almost like, so. Fritz is like a hunchback, yeah. and then he just went. I'm just going to stand up right for this next character. <laughs> oh, you've you've completely changed uh, acting. So, <laughs> acting character acting you're 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 in character you've been in character the whole time haven't you yes yeah, yeah. i was who's really me i don't know am i hunchback who knows might be no one knows who the real dwight is it's actually a eastern european woman for all i know i don't know okay <laughs> so uh the story then um should we go into the first story frankenstein yeah so it starts with this dude walking on the stage. It's like an opening sequence. Uh, he's dressed in a suit. I think he has a pipe. And he's like, uh, he warns a people. Suit. Yeah. He warns people about um, how scary this film can be, how disconcerting. So you just be careful, guys. It's almost like, I feel like that idea maybe played into the Crypt Keeper and Tales from the Crypt and those sort of ideas of people who introduce... Yeah. These sort of like, these films and stories, scary. Mm-hmm. It's the guy who sits you down and sort of, says, I'm going to read you a scary story. And the fact yeah. that he says if... it's going to be a scary story makes you think, oh bloody hell, this is going to be a scary <laughs> story. Shit, oh, what have I got myself <laughs> in for? Here? Strap yeah. in. Yeah. So uh, the first one starts with a bit of a Dennis the Menace sort of vibe. Like it's got um, Frankenstein, Doctor Frankenstein, and Fritz, his hunchback assistant. They're like watching someone get buried and they're like, we need some... They're looking at it like a pie on a window ledge. They're like, oh, we need to get some, yeah. of, that, uh, some of that red action. Uh, some of that fresh <laughs> fresh corpse. Yeah. Um, and then they go to get it. Um, they, look at the, they look at the body and it's it's not good. I think the, the neck's broken, so he says the brain is damaged or something like that. I, I can't really remember. Um, and then and then we've got Elizabeth, his fiance. She's uh, She's worried about what old Frankenstein's been up to. I didn't actually realise that they were that was his fiance the first time I watched it. I uh no. the only time I've watched it. <laughs> when I watched it <laughs> I didn't realise it was his fiance. <laughs> yeah, I guess it wasn't it wasn't sort of straight up, was it? But she was she well, was sort of com- I was confused because she goes to his dad. So basically Frankenstein's been in this like laboratory in his castle and then she goes to his dad with her friend, who I thought was her husband to say where's your son and he, he's like on her side it's, it's almost like the roles have been reversed a bit I don't know it seems a bit strange to me <laughs> yeah I think the setup of this was a bit strange like I wasn't sure that guy was who was with her initially mm. clearly he's trying to get in there isn't he yeah. he's trying to get in there because he's like oh, oh your husband's mental don't worry I'll, I'll sort you out I'll help you out you little <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, so um, so they're really worried about Elizabeth and this guy, they're really worried about uh, Henry Frankenstein. They think he's losing his mind to some sort of work. They go to Baron von Frankenstein, who's his, the guy's dad, and then he says, I'm sure he, he's shacking up with some other woman. I'll, yeah, so I'll this, this, was 
this was the first moment where it was like, this is a Carry On film character, yeah. uh, Baron von Frankenstein. I mean, you know, sounds like quite a respectable guy, Baron von Frankenstein. Uh, maybe some, like an intellectual or something. No. It is absolutely ludicrous. Pie-eating, <laughs> wine-fizzling, Where's Where's my shot? Oh, <laughs> good, well, of course not. Silly woman. It's like that. It's just like, oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man. He's proper Uncle Nobed. Like... He's yeah. just it's just a guy you don't want to be oh, it's just just me yeah. just me I'm just just me and you then is it? Oh, oh yeah, C- come here Elizabeth, sit on my lap. Oh that's right, old oh, oh, Baron Frankenstein, yes. Ooh, Bizarre. Touch your bum. Mm. <laughs> that's uh, okay, so uh um, oh, you want to re- reanimate something, do you? Oh, something's <laughs> animating right now. <laughs> Doesn't need electricity. <laughs> um It's alive <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh so she um they go to uh, someone called Dr. Waldman, who is Henry's old professor. Uh, it's a, a recurring theme. That's going to be in Brad Frankenstein as well. Um, he says, oh, yeah, so Frankenstein, he's he's lost his marbles. He's trying to bring stuff back from the dead. And they're like, oh, what's the harm in it? It's only animals, isn't it? And he goes, no, we're talking about humans here. Uh, so the three of them go to the watchtower, go to the laboratory, and they're trying yep. to get in. And they're... Um, Frankenstein's busy. I think he's pretty much there, isn't he? And they the start of the film. He's got his body. He's yeah, got yeah. His, all his setup. And he's uh, ready he's to ready do to the go. final, the final experiment to bring him to life. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, well, if you want to come in and see, come in and see. And then they go and st- they go inside, go upstairs. He sits them down. Um, doesn't give him any sun- sunglasses, which might have uh, added to the effect. I've got to say, the the yeah. equipment, the laboratory. I thought it was really cool, like the uh, the tester coils, like the winches and the chains, and like um, all of that whole the, the sound effects and stuff. It's, yeah, because it's, like, it's weird because you don't really get to you're not really told when this film is set. No, because at some point it looks like it might be like in the 1800s or something. Yeah, yeah. But then, but then they've got all this sort of like electrodes and you know bits and bobs that kind of look like they're maybe from the early 19. I don't know. It's yeah, weird. Yeah, do that. So, yeah. Thing is, when I was um, in the nineties, I was massively impressed with Tesla coils and things that you can touch and your hair goes up and stuff. So back in the thirties, like eighty years ago, they must have been like, "This is some high tech shit." This, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is it CGI. Been. Like, wow, films have come a long wow. way since last year when they first made them. Like, wow, <laughs> <laughs> things have come a long way. This has got a sound. This has got sound and everything. <laughs> yeah, one day they'll even have color. <laughs> well, don't get ahead of yourself. Come on, <laughs> silliness. Uh, yeah. But also, you don't really realize where this film is set. Like, what country? It just says in a European village. So this is filmed in. They have the European village, and it's like a universal backlot yeah. place. And yeah. It's just I don't think they ever really say. Uh, it'd be interesting. I don't know what what it is in the novel. Um, Where all the all the actors are just very matter of fact and incredibly well pronounced. Well pronunciated. Actually, I can't even say that word. So what am I even bothering? Well pronunciated. <laughs> well, they're bloody well pronunciated. Um, yeah. Everyone rolls their R's, and you know it's beautiful. It's beautiful to listen to. Yeah. So this is the scene like that's been parodied and like pastiche so many times where they. Uh, the lightning comes in and they pull the chain and the, and the body goes up to the to the thing and the lightning you know squirts it uh, <laughs> squirts on the that body the lightning and, tickles the body and then uh uh it's kind of weird to see this told straight because i've seen this so many times in like frankenweenie like young frankenstein you yeah. know as like um comedy versions or like diff- like not serious and then this is like full-on like straight uh, it was pretty cool it was uh yeah, it's quite disconcerting. Well, obviously there was a bit earlier as well where Fritz uh, goes and gets a fresh brain for Doctor Frankenstein from yeah. the from like the university or something, where there's just a load of brains knocking about, you know. And they're and they're well labelled. One says brain of a Criminal. psychopath, yeah. and one says brain of a lovely man who worked in the post office. And he go and he picks up the post office man was one, and then he drops it, smash. Yeah, well, it's it like it, when the guy's doing the lecture to show the brains. It's like an episode of Look Around You. Here we have <laughs> the normal brain, and here the abnormal brain. Notice the brainular circles or whatever on the thing. Yeah. And it was so Look Around You. And then and he just goes, for a laugh. I'm just going to leave these here, 
and I expect him to be here by the time I get back. <laughs> I'm just off to the lavatory, yeah. and hopefully the brains will still be here. And he even does a mix them around like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which one was it? Oh, who knows? Um, so yeah, so you, he, he, you know, he says like notice on the abnormal brain uh, from the psychopath or the criminal. He says like these extra circular nodules or something, and like I was like, I was trying to see. I couldn't see like anything. Like, that was exactly the same. I was like, what? Did, did you did you have your three D glasses on? <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at those three D <laughs> like bumps on that. Three D. Oh, those three D nodules coming soon in IMAX. <laughs> oh, look at those skin tags. Oh. <laughs> I can almost dip my finger in that canyon, brain canyon, whatever it's called, and that spaghetti. <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, uh, due to the incompetence of Fritz, poor old Fritz. Yeah. So he picks up the brain, smashes it, and then he goes, "Oh bloody! I have to have the psychopath one instead." Whoops. And then you all <laughs> you automatically know that s- something bad's going to happen now. Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. I like I I like the way he just sort of picked up the abnormal one and went like, <laughs> <laughs> "Yeah." What, what but why did he? Wasn't there like a noise or something that made him drop the normal one? He picked it up and then it went. Someone went like clang. Someone went. Ah! <laughs> dropped it. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, bloody heck! Yeah. Then he just like yeah. sweeps the other one under the under like the carpet. The the other yeah. brain. Oh, bloody dude! Yeah. What have we done? So yeah. Um, so that's obviously... yeah. So I was kind of say Colin Colin Clive, the guy who plays Doctor Frankenstein. But he's quite good. I thought he had very dramatic eyebrows. <clears throat> he had incredibly dramatic eyebrows. He had quite dark eyes, which made me think, you know, he's been working on this stuff for ages, and he's, he's been finally made it. Finally made it. <laughs> what was that? He's been practicing them eyes for years yeah. for this part. It's <laughs> a good impression. <laughs> it's a bit like that. Yeah, but uh, so- he was really good, and he had like a perfectly sort of screechy sort of voice. Said so like when he did the I'm a, it's alive sort of line, it sounded Ooh. It's alive <laughs> Yeah. It sounded Even that. it sounded almost like that's what everyone else has been basing it on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Again, even though even though he was screaming, it was incredibly well well sort of well well spoken. Yeah, it was good. It's alive That was good, I liked it. He's, he did say that I've not been because I always thought Frankenstein was made from dead body parts. He, he's, yeah. In this film, he said, "I didn't make, I didn't steal the body parts. I made them." And then um, he quite clearly shows that he's like stitched some guy's hands on this arm. It doesn't yeah. really go into detail. It doesn't really get, make but, any sense. He sounds like one of those guys who's like, "Yeah, yeah, I, I made one of these, didn't I? I made one of it." And he's just taking, he's stolen things from everybody stolen else and just stuck, yeah, stuck them yeah. together. Um, so he sounds like a right, a right to fight, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then the, and first, pro- the first time the hand, so the 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 whole it's alive, and he says, "I am a god. I know what it be. I know what it now means to be god or something." And then the hand moves, and I thought that bit was quite cool. It's quite, uh, oh, yeah, it's full of life. That lightning yeah. squirted him up with life, isn't it? And um, <laughs> and then Frankenstein sits up at, like he's just had a like he's had a heavy night out, and he's only had forty five minutes sleep. Yeah, you know, he's ruined. He needs to get he needs to get himself a drink. He yeah. used to get himself a bacon sandwich. Yeah. What did he, you know, the uh, the bolts in his neck? Is that from this film? I think, well, I think so. I think a lot of the design of this of this character came from this. Because I don't think, I think in the in one of the early iterations of it, it was very different. Mm. It just kind of looked like a man with a sack on his head, I don't know. Um, and if, I, I think in Mary Shelley, you don't get much of the monster in the book I swear but maybe I'm mistaken I'm not sure hmm, interesting. Uh, yeah so, so I believe a lot of a lot of the way Frank the, the sort of iconic look of Frankenstein which is the flat the flat head the bolts in the neck green well obviously it's black and white but pale yeah. sort of complexion I never um, understood why he had a flat head like why yeah it's a bit weird isn't it what it's, a bit, it's, it's so <laughs> Dr. Frankenstein could, head? Dr. Frankenstein could put his paint on his head <laughs> <laughs> look, I know, look, yeah. look, I know I created you, mate, but where else am I going to put this beer? He needs some. That's like, right. He needs some functionality out of his like design, I guess. So he just made a table for your head, like yeah. a little coffee table. It's <laughs> weird, isn't it? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like you've it's got... not even like normally flat. It's not like a, sl- a normal head that's like a little bit flat. It's completely like it's like, it's like 
It's like he's cut the top of the skull off, put the brain in, and he's gone, oh, bloody hell, what am I going to do now? And he's gone, just put this box there. <laughs> put this box there and yeah. paint some hair on it. Yeah. So it's like what those, to... um, what those uh, pies you get there in that like tin. Do you know what I mean? That like you... Uh... Frey Bentos? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Frey Bentos, like a big one on his head. And he just put like the hair over the top. As if yeah. In Fritz style, as if nobody will notice. Nobody will notice this. This flat, flat, go. and stupidly looking flat head. <laughs> can you can you can you do your best? Can you do your best impression of Frankenstein's monster, please? Uh, what, did he say? <laughs> what did he say? We didn't say anything, did he? In this one, so I think it was like. Uh... <laughs> no, I think it was, his eyes were a bit more. He looked. Yeah. He he reminded me of uh, you know you get like a rescue dog, and like. <laughs> More so later in the film when he starts like acting out, but like oh he's, he's quite quite a nice like pleasant thing, but then all of a sudden like you don't realize he's scared of fire or you know someone puts a light on, and then like he just flips out and starts like attacking and killing stuff. It's like oh, she put him down. Yeah, just put him down for God's sake. Yeah, because yeah, he's, he's he's obviously quite a broken, quite a... broken individual. <laughs> he's just he's just broken. Yeah. yeah, I think what's the point in having this guy around because. You know what I mean? Like they've created him. Yeah, you've created life. Fine, you're playing God. Fine, great. Are you saying what is Good the point of you. life? That's what. No, question. no. But what is the point of keeping him around? Because he is tablehead, isn't it? Table, but what's the <laughs> point? He's just he's bad tempered. He's unpredictable. He's he's um, social, uh, psychopathic. He's killing people, mm. and he's just. A, and you know what I mean? You can't have a chat with him. I know he chats a bit in Bride of Frankenstein, but you can't yeah. have a chat. You can't sit down and have a chat with him because you'd be like, oh, having a lovely chat with him, and then suddenly you just go, and he yeah. just <laughs> could put the head off. <laughs> What's the point? Yeah, I only asked if he wants a tea. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. He, um, he's kind of stupid that would annoy me. Like, I'd be talking to him and say, so, I've just read this book, and I really like this scene. What do you think about it? He wouldn't, wouldn't say anything interesting. He wouldn't be adding anything to the conversation. And I'd be like, oh, fuck me. And Jesus you live in this house, Christ. do you? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you yeah. what you need, a, a bride to, to sort you out now. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so what happens next? So, Yeah, so there's a lot of stuff in the castle with uh, well, Frankenstein. Is his wife and is his fiance and they're all sold. They're like, oh yeah, this is actually pretty good. Like, Yeah. He has got a very good table for her. This is nice work. It's a nice craftsmanship. Yeah. They're, go- they're going, you've done the business here, mate. You've made a mm. decent bloke. We're going to go back to the castle and just chill out for a bit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so I think the next scene is when he shows him the light from the ceiling and then he flips out. And then yeah. they go, oh, no, he's actually quite dangerous. Um, so they're going to ch- they chain him up in the in the yeah. dungeon, then, don't they? Yeah, Which and is, then uh... Fritz takes his like t- flaming torch and he's like just poking it at him. Yeah, so Fritz Fritz is now acting like a like a kid with a magnifying glass would a, a nest of ants. Yeah, a, I got the impression he was jealous of uh, Frankenstein's new freak. Like, yeah, he's like, oh, I'm the best freak. And Frank <laughs> Frankenstein was like, well, maybe I'm the best freak. But and the, then he was like, is, like Frankenstein had like a pint, and he was like on, on uh, Fritz's back, and he went <laughs> <laughs> put it on Frankenstein's head. Mm-hmm. This pint doesn't it's quite rest so. on your hump bunch bag. I'm going to have to make a new freak in order so this pint to be rested. Can you just use a normal coffee table like everybody else? No. It's not. You can't, you can't move around with you. Yeah. Yeah. Imbeciles. Or, I, keep, I keep wanting to say Igor, but it's, it's Fritz. It's not Igor. Yeah, so I don't know when he, when Fritz became Igor, whether it was created for another film or whether he was there was a guy called Igor in the book. Who knows? But he was called Fritz in this, and obviously he's been antagonising Frankenstein, and then Frankenstein ends up losing his nut, losing his bonds. Which one? And, I don't know which one of them, yeah. and strangling Fritz. See, this bit I was confused by, because I was like, what's happened? Because it was quite under... Yeah, what do you mean? You yeah. didn't really know what happened. Yeah. It was just Fritz's body was hanging in the background. You could see him hanging like a silhouette of him, So, and you obviously knew that Frankenstein had strung him up. Yeah. And Dr. Frankenstein and his, his, his other dude, his other dude <laughs> are obviously shocked by it, and this. I find this I find this whole bit where they were in the castle and people were coming and going and Frankenstein was kicking off all a bit aimless. Yeah, bit. I think I think you're basically just getting the point across that he's uh, he's a wild card. He doesn't play by no 
Doctor's rules, and like he's he's, he's violent, and the outcome was that he, he killed Fritz, who maybe deservedly so, and um, and then they decide to put him down, and the Doctor Doctor Waldman is like, you Frankenstein, you're about to get married, you go chill out, I'll sort this mess out, I'll I'll destroy him, and then um, and then that's it. So he, uh, for Henry Frank Doctor Frankenstein leaves. And like the next scene, he's like all happy. I'm getting married. Like he has no, like it's it's his conscience is completely clear. Um, but then uh, Doctor Waldman stays to kill kill Frankenstein, and then um, Frankenstein wakes up and strangles him to death. Yeah, he's about to give him the little lethal injection, and he's just he's, about to stick it. Yeah. He's just about to stick it in, and he goes, "Oh no, I won't have a nap." Strangles yeah. him. D- Frankenstein death count, kill count. Sorry. Two so far, and he hadn't even got out the got out of his house. Strangling his like his thing as well, isn't it? Oh, yeah, seems to be. He's really into it. <laughs> he's really, he's really into it. Strangling. He's got you giant think he'd... hands as well. Yeah, he's got pretty big hands. You think like he'd do like a diving headbutt or something, Frankenstein? Yeah, that seems almost like perfect. Like, why doesn't he? Yeah, like, do you remember, uh, what's his name from uh, Spider-Man comics? Guy with a... Hammerhead. Hammerhead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he had a pretty flat head. Um, didn't he have just, like, a bit of metal on his head or something? Yeah, I think he used so. To, yeah. He, he used to headbutt people left, right, and centre. I don't understand how that would be, like, a good, like, power, like a villain. Yeah. A bit of metal in the head. Because that <laughs> wouldn't, like, like absorb the impact. It was still... It was still... It was probably hurt you more. It's, like, underneath yeah. your skin, like... You've got no layer of defence between you and the metal. Your brain is just getting absolutely liquidised when you go around and bump people. <laughs> yeah. Oh, because he was like a gangster, wasn't he? So he's like, my I've name, had like. My name's Famafed. Oh, what? <laughs> it's like you really need to see someone, mate. <laughs> Hammerhead, you all right? <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's Frankenstein now. Yeah. Um, oh, that... <laughs> we need to put him down. Put Frank, put Hammerhead down. Okay, yeah, so old, old, uh, old Frankie, Frankie, yeah, Frankie goes to Hollywood. Yeah, he wander, he wanders down now into the into out of the castle and into oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, civilization into to the see woods some people of the European town. Yeah, yeah. So the European town, they're having a little party, they're having a get together, they're having some, da- they're dancing about. I'm assuming this is for Frankenstein's uh, Doctor Frankenstein's wedding. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> and, it, and then a uh, the little girl. Yeah, do you know? I, even though from this the start of the scene, I knew what was going to happen. This was quite effective, I think. Don't you think oh, it's yeah, quite effective? Yeah. So this scene, this is the scene. Uh, this scene was cut because this film came out. Uh, I think I read before they uh, coded films, like they uh, gave films ratings, um, and then they had to cut this scene or the second half of it when the ratings came in um, because it's, it's quite. A, it's kind of like gruesome in a way, like. He just sort of lobs her in the water. Yeah, yeah. So obviously he's bought the little girls like, oh, will you come play with me? And he's like, yeah, 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 of course I will. And then they do a thing where they're flowing, f- throwing the heads of flowers into the water, and they're floating. Yeah. And obviously Frankenstein, being the bloody maverick that he is, yeah. goes, if these flowers are floating, I want to see if this little girl floats. Yeah. Which is which is normal, and he lobs her in. <laughs> and like, it doesn't even look like uh, like it's like a little pond. She just goes straight down, like it's. It's almost like um, there was like a little vortex or something beneath that pond. Like he had no idea, yeah, like, that, that that pool was that deep. No, it's her own Frank fact. Frankenstein's monster is an innocent party in this. Yeah, yeah. He was just <laughs> <laughs> then he, he runs away. He runs away after he does it, like uh, like he's just been told off by his parents or something. Like he uh, Stop, runs away crying. Frankenstein's monster, get yourself, get yourself to your room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, so he runs away. So it, it's, it is quite effective that scene because um, she yeah. just dies. Like it's, it's it's kind of sudden, and she's just like a very normal little girl, and she dies. And then um, then they what happens next? <laughs> I think I think there's preparations for the wedding are completed. Um, and the wedding's pretty much about to happen when Waldman arrives to, to sort of say that the doctor um, who was going to kill him with the old mm. has been found strangled. And then obviously, yeah. Dr. Frankenstein suspects the monster. Well, I don't know who else it would be, but... Uh, yeah. And then, he, and, then he hears a, and then he hears a scream somewhere. There's an odd bit where they're running around the house trying to find the 
they obviously think that the, the Frankenstein's monster is in the house. And they run up, down some stairs, up some stairs, down some stairs again, Scooby-Doo style, trying to find us. You know what I mean? The screen was only coming from one place. And they're like, it was downstairs in the cellar. Downstairs. It was upstairs in the... Yeah. And then Frankenstein just walks into the room. Like yeah. Like Frankenstein's monster. Walks into the room. Yeah. Um, it's, it's like a big house. There are a lot yeah. of people there. He's giant. He's not, like, stuff. he's not good at hiding. He's not subtle, because he walks forever. Like, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> he he does do that. Yeah, true. <laughs> he's a he's an absolute pain in the ass, isn't he? He's not going to hide just, and seek. Also, what's his problem? Like, he's just killed a kid. Go and have some time to reflect somewhere. Go and have some quiet moment. Don't go storming into the house trying to kill someone else. But we don't. My know God, trying to kill someone. Is this weird actually? Because um, so he he doesn't do anything to uh, Elizabeth. I think he just scares her, something rotten, and then he runs away, and then they're like, okay, we've got to find him now. Like, this is this is the end of the line. At the same time, there's a big party happening in the town. The father of the, the drowned girl walks through the party with the daughter and the dead daughter in his hands. It's quite an effective scene, I think. And he walks yeah. forward, and then um, he goes, Frankenstein's monster did it. And I was like, how the hell does he know that? Like, yeah. he's made some assumptions there. Like, first of all, yeah. how does he even know about the monster? And they've been doing about the <laughs> yeah. monster. Like, yeah. why would, why would they be celebrating Frankenstein's wedding if he's going out <laughs> making monsters? And how so, does he know about the monster? How does he know the monster was created by Frankenstein? How does he know the monster killed his daughter? How did he find his daughter if she just drowned, or I guess she was floating in the in the river? So she did float. She did float. Yeah. Someone should tell Frankenstein's monster that. Yeah. Yeah. He'd be he'd be over the moon. Oh gosh. Yeah. Um, and, Oh, down here. So this guy, like, he's made so many assumptions. Like, I think he's made some stuff. Like, they say, what happened to your daughter? Did you do it? No, it was uh, Frankenstein's <laughs> uh, monster, wasn't it? What? Frankenstein's got a monster. And then, like, it turned out to be true. And he went, I "Told you, it's Frankenstein's monster." <laughs> <laughs> um, I bloody told you, mate. I bloody told you. Yeah, it was all a bit mad. That, that that was the kind of part where plot kind of just filled in the blanks for you, didn't it? It just yeah. went. Look, this is what's happened. Don't question me about it, all right? Yeah, yeah. This is the story. And then obviously everyone goes after Frankenstein's monster, like uh, the classic... The big hunting party. The big hunting party with fire and, and, and like, uh, forks and, you know, not little forks, but, you know, Brilliant. garden forks. And they all go after, go after Frankenstein's monster, who ends up... It, so it, this there's a bit of like a windmill now, isn't there? Yeah. So they uh, they chase him at the windmill, um, take him right at the windmill. Well, Frank, Doctor Frankenstein takes him at the windmill, and then they're <laughs> they're fighting in the. He does what? <laughs> they're fighting in there, and um, he knocks Frankenstein out. And there's one bit where he uh, all the villagers are they're burning the bottom of the windmill, so it starts it's on fire. They're all screaming, lots of dogs barking and stuff, and. Um, Frank, the monster chucks Dr. Frankenstein's body out of the window. And like, yeah. it lands on... It says, so look, look at the Wikipedia uh, entry. It says, uh, they find the monster has climbed to the top, dragging Frankenstein with him. The monster hurls the scientist to the ground. His fall is broken by the veins of the windmill, saving his life. It didn't look like it saved his life when I saw it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like his back literally like bends completely around the weather vein. Luckily, his fall was broken by concrete. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was watching. I was like, "Fuck me!" He's... I didn't realize he died. Like if it you, looked like he just gone. If you watch that happen, you wouldn't go, "Oh, thank God!" Yeah, <laughs> thank God he's all right. You think, <laughs> exactly, think dead? Yeah. Every bone in yeah. his body oh, broke. He's, he's lucky to to have uh, landed on that, wasn't he? Land on that <laughs> blade that like Seth snapped his back right into. It looked really bad. It looked like the worst when you used to watch like epic fail videos on YouTube. It someone's like, it... gone, someone's watched Bride of Frankenstein and gone back and filled that bit in. Yeah. Because if you're writing that about the film, you go, slung him onto the floor, obviously killing him. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, he's, uh, well, he, apparently he doesn't die, but it looks like he should. Um, and then uh, the, just the, 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 they burn. Understand. Yeah, he burns, and that's the end. But no, it's not the end because it, it has this really weird end scene. With Baron von Frankenstein, the dad, like Frankenstein is in hospital bed or like he's in his bed, he's getting better, and there's about ten sort of scantily clad uh, women service people um, 
they bring up like some really old wine that used to belong to Baron from Frankenstein's wife, I think. And they're like, this is for uh, Frankenstein, so it gets better. And then Baron from Frankenstein just closes the door on the sun, takes the wine, and then it looks like he's just about to like have it off with these like ten, <laughs> this harem of uh, women. <laughs> I think whoever this whoever this guy was playing Baron von, Fra- von Frankenstein was like the film had finished. Even the character they were the name sounds stupid. And he went, "No, I've got a great idea for the end sequence. Should be this." And somehow he convinced everyone that it was a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Idiot, idiot. <laughs> when did this happen as well? Because Bride of Frankenstein seems to start. I know. Yeah. yeah. Immediately at the end of Frankenstein, like even even there's even some overlap. So when did this scene with Baron von Frankenstein, who doesn't exist? In Bride of Frankenstein, does he? I don't think so. No, no, he's gone. He died after he's... a night of sex with ten women. Like, yeah, too much for him. The, well, old, I want the that. old wine oh. was it's corked pretty badly, as it turned out. <laughs> oh, my old wine was corked, and you know something else was corked. And yeah. well, at least he at least he went out doing what he loved. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You'd assume. Okay, but so... yeah, but yeah. So Bride of Frankenstein starts pretty much as. The windmill was still on fire, and do you know what I mean? It's just uh, yeah, it's you, really weird. How often do you get that in sequels? It's weird. I quite liked. I quite like how it worked. The, the weird thing for me was because I watched this one before I watched the other, before I watched the first film. So this be- was weird. So so it opens with the the windmill burning, and all the villagers uh, leave, and then there's a guy who wants to prove that Frankenstein is dead. The monster is dead, so he climbs in. I didn't realise at the time that this was the father of the daughter. The girl yeah, it was, it was the father of Maria, yeah, because he said something like, he killed my daughter, I want to I wanna go and make sure he's dead. And yeah. his wife, even his wife is like OTT. Yeah, yeah. His wife was like, don't let it do it, man, don't do it. And oh, <laughs> she screamed at the top of her lungs when he like fell down the hole. Oh, my God. Yeah. But like, uh, <laughs> I just thought he was a randomist. I thought it was victim number one and victim number two. Yeah, I, I miss a whole lot of emotional weight. If you you might have had a bit more emotional weight, I don't know, I don't know. Um, because I was like, these characters just dying. Uh, but, yeah, but you know, they 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 had the daughter who got killed by him. But we've actually yeah. missed a bit as well. So the way it actually starts, which is kind of cool, it's um, Mary Shelley, Shelley, I think her brother and Lord Byron are there, like in a. So in the way the first film opened with that guy saying this is going to be a scary film. This one opens with them telling stories, and uh, mm. Lord Byron is playing like this, like ludicrous, rolling hard. Yeah. Guy. Um, and then she's like, "Oh well, you know, Frankenstein didn't actually die; uh, he actually lived on." And then the story begins there. But I thought it was quite a nice little intro. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I thought it was. Um, okay, so I'll be honest: the Bride of Frankenstein film, which we've now moved into, I don't really remember that much from it. <laughs> So I don't know if I just like watching the first one kind of erase the second one a little bit for me. I don't know. I th- yeah, I think that like um, as far as I can tell from a lot of what I read about these films, a lot of people seem to think that um, Bride of Frankenstein or The Bride of Frankenstein is much better than Frankenstein in pretty much every way. But I don't think I agree. I don't think I agree. I think a lot of the weight of... Uh, even though they sort of push the character of Frankenstein's monster a lot more... I kind of still feel like he's doing a lot of the same stuff. I don't yeah. think he, 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 I mean, I know he manages to talk and sort of almost make a friend of sorts, but I feel like he's still this over the top guy who's just, well, not guy, but monster, yeah. flat headed monster. He was just overreacting about everything. Yeah. You know what I mean, just overreacting. Yeah, I, I do know what you mean. Um, so this is, this is further up on the Empire list that we're doing um, I did think Frankenstein was better than Bride of Frankenstein I did think, I think that the tone was a little bit more complete it felt a bit more uh, gothic and, and true whereas this one especially later on with like this, uh, the little people in the jars like the tone just seemed to shift kind of weirdly away from what the yeah. first one did uh, but some people seem to love this one so I don't know yeah I don't know as I said before, the character this scullery maid who seems to appear, well, her name's Minnie apparently, but she seems to appear and like she's at the start when when they sort of realise that um, Doctor Frankenstein's alive and that the monsters and they assume the monster's dead. She kind of like f- flits in and out. She ends up in sort of like the house where where the sort of family live as well. Where 
she's just not needed. She's just no. scree- <laughs> screeching and screaming and doing a load of mental, crazy stuff. I don't really understand. I don't understand what the point of her is. Yeah, um, she was kind of pointless. I, I did definitely didn't need. To, I wasn't watching the first one thinking this needs, this needs an idiot like another idiot. But yeah, ma- imagine this film had Baron von Frank, Baron von Frankenstein in it as well. Imagine he's not, that. He's not in this one at all. No, no? I don't remember. He's not. Him being. No, he's not. He's not in this one. And uh, imagine a scene with Baron von, von Frankenstein and this mini character. Imagine those two interacting. Just imagine that for a second. That's horrible. I don't want to imagine them interacting because they would likely be getting it on with Baron von Frankenstein. Oh, uh, yeah. If he had his way. Yeah. And she'd be screeching at the top of her lungs just oh, at the sight of mini yeah. Baron. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, okay. so obviously they take, they take um, Baron von Frankenstein, sorry, they take Dr. Frankenstein's body back to his castle home where they then realise that he ain't dead at all. Uh, he was just KO'd. He was briefly KO'd. We... Wait, I'm confused. So, uh, I think this is because I watched it the wrong way around. So, he did actually die in the first one? No, no, he didn't. He was still, <laughs> still alive, wasn't he? Baron, uh, Dr. Frankenstein was still alive. Yeah. They thought he was dead, but they took his body back to the to the castle home in order to, to sort of, I, I don't know, announce that he died. And then when the when the mortician or the doctor was examining him, suddenly he just he was alive. His, his hand his hand moved, and then Minnie, the scullery maid, screamed again for like the fifth time. Mm. Ah, he's alive! Do you know what I mean? So it was a nice little flip there mm. to show that he, he was alive rather than thing. Is that uh, because yeah. because I I was under the impression that he was actually supposed to have lived in the end of the first one, well, which I know he did. But I was, do you think they added this whole thing here because a lot of people watch that? fall from the windmill think and think well, he's definitely dead like yeah. no question about it and anyway there was nothing there was there was to nothing to show to, there was nothing to show that he that he wasn't dead at that point so it's almost like then they went oh actually if we're going to do another film we should probably bring back the main character i'm going to do that just say he didn't die when it was obvious he did all oh, right are people going to fall for that yeah yeah of course they are yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah, obviously Doctor Frankenstein pretty much is coming is coming back to his normal life, and his wife's obviously a little bit um, upset about everything that's happened. And then Henry and Henry Frankenstein's former mentor, um, just one of his the one waspish, of his the, the waspish, waspish man, Dr. Pretorius, yeah, just arrives at his house. Bear, bear in mind, he hasn't given him bloody any time to recover from this whole thing. But obviously, he is he is a guy who knows of Doctor Frankenstein's experiments, wants to like team up with him elaborate on the experiments and create something new and that's when um he takes dr frankenstein to his lair <laughs> it's got to be a lair and it? it's not it's not anything else is this with um, the little people yeah and he <laughs> and he says look here's all my previous experiments that i've done yeah and basically there's tiny tiny versions of human beings like what does this mean yeah so this is kind of, so frankenstein frankenstein's monster even is like you can sort of you get the idea that he's a, a dead man's brain in a sort of weird dead body that's some sort of not quite real life like it's like it's not like really human but then like dr pretorius is little people he has like six or seven little people in these little jars and they're, they're just like like one's a businessman one's a, a ballet dancer and they're like acting as if they are those a those. king and a queen it reminded me of that black mirror episode i think it was the christmas one where um there was like a little ai sprite type thing egg or which was egg yeah which was supposed to be sort of like in a little white room yeah, yeah. And, it, and it was basically a, like a clone basically a tiny little clone yeah. of somebody yeah and of, and obviously it was almost like that and it was a bit it was a bit sinister really but i didn't quite okay it was sinister but i didn't understand it in this film i was yeah, a bit like what well, yeah. so he's created these tiny little people so what does he need dr frankenstein for because he can clearly create life yeah a tiny little pe- look, do, you, do you know what i mean just do that but on a bigger scale why do you need Dr. Frankenstein to get a load of bits together? To make a bride for To make to make a bride monster. for Frankenstein. You sicko. Yeah. And also when these people are just in these jars, like do they need to do they need to, to go to the toilet? Do they need to eat and drink to stay alive? Or are they some has he somehow harnessed life uh, and, and and he's maintaining these tiny little jars? An infinite life. Like what is it? I needed more from that. It was like, oh little people, he's done some little people. No, I needed more. It yeah. was too vague. Didn't understand what the hell they were on about. <laughs> I do. I don't oh, really understand he's... why he wanted, why he needed Doctor Frankenstein if he could no. make perfect life. 
pretty much yeah. in these like little on a small people. scale. Yeah, yeah. And he, he made a king who, and he made a queen, and the king loves the little the queen. It was like, oh, oh yeah, weird. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he was like, oh, and there's a ballet dancer, but she only dances to this one song, Bruno Mars, uh, <laughs> which is annoying, you know, because I've got to keep playing that song for a the little rest square. Of the film. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so so he tries to. You're gonna have to take the uh, the brunt of this this one, Ben. And uh, so uh, so so what happens? So she um he convinces Doug Frankenstein to help him or to to work with him. Yeah. So he basically in, says he wants to create a mate for the monster, and then offers a toast to their adventure to a new world of gods and monsters. Um. So he is kind of like. He's kind of forcing Henry to help him at this point, but I don't really know what's in it for Henry at this point. Yeah, isn't he just like um, uh, pandering to his like need to create life impressive. and, and be, yeah, yeah, yeah. be an impressive doctor man? Almost like that. So, so, so the so the um, the doctor, so Doctor Septimus Pretorius is this guy. Is this is the waspy man? Yeah. Um, so he says he's going to grow an artificial brain while Hev- Henry gathers the parts uh, for the mate. And then obviously, and then we and then we sort of go back to what Frankenstein's been up to. Previously on Frankenstein's monster, what's he been up to? So, and he's just been doing, milling about, doing a bit more of what he did in the first one. So like he's out there, um, and then I think he gets strung up by some villagers, right? Yeah, well, because just before he sees like a woman up on a little cliff edge or up on a little few rocks, and she's like just just having a I don't know, she's just chilling out or whatever, and then he sees her and goes. Hey! <laughs> and, and obviously, what you do is when you see something terrifying, is if you're on a ledge, just fall off that ledge. <laughs> so she yeah. falls off the ledge into the water, and then obviously Frankenstein is kind of saves her, but I guess he's more of a hindrance, isn't he? Because he just gets in and gets limbs everywhere and pulls her out, and then she keeps screaming and screaming and screaming, and that's when obviously the other villagers sort of hear the screams. They've obviously been searching for Frankenstein's monster. Since. Oh, okay, yeah. So they're still on the task. Yeah. Still they're on still the job. on the task. Yeah, no one's gone home. You know what I mean? Some some people have been out there doing doing a uh, eighteen hour shifts. Wow. So this is um, like literally within hours of the first film. Yeah, exactly. And it so only takes the same amount of time for Doctor Henry Frankenstein's back to like reattach to its like lower heart to his pelvis. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. The wonders yeah. of science. <laughs> so I mean, they do sort of like string him up, don't they? At this point, yeah. Uh, so oh yeah, and they, I remember now. Yeah, so they lock him up in like a little prison thing. And yeah, he, obviously he breaks out within seconds. Yeah, there was a little bit of Christian imagery here, wasn't there, where they sort of strung him up on a on a pole, and at one point he was sort of up like that. It was, which I thought was a bit strange. There was a few bits of Christian imagery. There was a Jesus on the cross at one point, which uh, Frankenstein had a little bit of a look at, and he went, hmm? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when yeah. does he start talking? So <laughs> yeah, so he sort of attacks a sort of gypsy family, doesn't he? Who are sort of just um chilling out. And, Why does he do yeah, that? he goes because he, he wants to eat their food. They're like cooking a lovely a lovely raccoon or something. What's wrong and, with this guy? <laughs> and he walks over and he's just like, oh, I love a bit of that meat. And he's trying to eat the meat and it's burning his hand and he's scared of the fire. For God's sake, <laughs> just calm down. This and that's guy. when he hear, that's when he hears a little violin playing. <laughs> he hears a little violin playing from a. Uh, a, a, a little blind man. Yeah, so this guy's. Who, I remember this guy. So he's uh, he's quite a nice. He's the kind of person that if you were a monster, you'd like to 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 find and enjoy a meal with. Because uh, he, he's kind of like an earthy sort of dude. Uh, he's cooking some food. He just wants a friend. He's, so he's cooking some food. He's smoking. He's smoking the Mary Jane. Yeah. He's, uh, he's, he he's likes, just chilling out, man. He just wants a guy to smoke some J with him. Apparently. Yeah. Um, he's just like look. I'm not going to judge you, no matter what you've got, no matter what you've done, no matter what you've been through. Yeah. I'm here for you, mate. And Frankenstein goes, uh, <laughs> so let's chill out. Let's, uh, although when Frankenstein comes in, he kind of like, it's a bit weird because he kind of like says, I'll get you some food and then goes, now go to sleep. Yeah, no, it is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've only now just got here, mate. Bedtime. I don't know you, now you are, it's really. bedtime. I've known you for two minutes. Yeah. Get but even bed. if I was Frankenstein, even if I was Frankenstein, I'd be like, I don't trust this guy. Yeah. There was a bit at this point. Now uh, this it's toilet is... time. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't need to go. There was a bit at this point. This was obviously my, my damaged brain that thought this. But there was a part where uh, Frankenstein was kind of sleeping or going to sleep, and yeah. then the old blind man kind of like rested his head somewhere, and then there was a weird shot where it panned backwards and it, 
<laughs> it looked like a little blind man was smoking a pipe. <laughs> <laughs> now it's your turn. Smoking's good. Yeah. Smoking's good. Careful yeah. when you pull the skin back. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> it was a bit odd. Anyway, yeah. so then we get a little bit. Well, we don't know how long Frankenstein's monster stays with this guy, but we kind of the next day they're kind of. Um, I'm assuming it's the next day. The blind man's kind of showing him different things, like this is bread. You like bread? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah I like bread. He picks it up, well, listens so when to did it. Start talking? <laughs> like, is he just like slowly starting to talk over this whole process? Yeah, so now, he, with the time he's spending with this with the little blind dude who's telling him what different things are, here, smoke, good, good, smoke, good. And that's when he starts speaking. That's when he says, smoke, heroin, good. Heroin, good. Her- <laughs> heroin, good. I like it when he's yeah. smoking. He knows what he's doing as well. Like, that's from yeah, yeah. yeah. That dead psychopath's brain is definitely... A normal brain inside of him, yeah. Fritz did good uh, of that one. Yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah, obviously that's fine for a while, but then two other guys turn up. Two... Interfering guys turn up. Uh, they're like, "Hey, we've been lost out in the woods for ages. We want a place to stay." And the blind man, being the absolute kind soul he is, says, "Come smoke on in, on everyone. Smoke, me. <laughs> smoke on this pipe. It's bedtime now. Now it's toilet time." Um, and then obviously, the two the two guys come in and they go, "Hang on a minute, you're chilling out with a monster." Yeah. Oh, you're chilling out with a bloody monster. And then obviously Frankenstein does his does his thing. Frankenstein's monster, sorry, does his thing and loses his shit and burns down the house. With the oh. little blind man. What, the blind man dies? It's I'm not sure if the blind man dies, but the blind man says something like, why would you do this? I thought we were friends or something. Yeah, it's sad, isn't it? I yeah. um, I feel like that's the main, that's the whole theme of Frankenstein, is that um, you should never smoke another man's pipe. <laughs> but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> never smoke another man's pipe, because, uh, yeah, that's it. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Well, you can do if you want, mate. You've got to make your own decisions in life, you know? It's yeah. fine. Okay, so when does uh, Pretorius come back into it? <laughs> Pretty much now, I think. Um, somehow, uh, a fra- Frankenstein's monster ends up with Pretorius again. I think he just managed to stumble upon where they are. Um, I think he's having a lovely bit of dinner. Have you noticed when Pretorius actually says one thing? He, he, early on in the film, he offers Dr. Frankenstein a little bit of gin, and he goes, it's my only weakness. And then later on, he offers the Frankenstein's monster... A smoke, and he says, "It's my only weakness." Ooh, very waspish thing to say. Very waspish very thing waspish. to say. Very much like uh, the Joker, the Dark Knight, who can't commit to how he got his scars. He's a little bit of a lion, so and so. Has he? Uh, has he got his um, cohorts to look for body parts yet? For the yes, yeah, so his, okay. his cohorts looking for body parts, getting body parts, I believe. And, and so I remember I made a Frank note said, here. This is one of my notes from when I watched it. I must have. I think I had a beer or something. I can't remember much, but I, I did make a very good note here. It's a quote from Doctor Pretorius. He said, "I hope her bones are firm." Like, yeah, I just remember yeah. hearing that and be like, "Oh, I need to note that down." <laughs> yeah, for exactly. use. But he's and a very then, creepy guy, Pretorius. Yeah, yeah, very, very, very creepy. And I think at this point, Henry Doctor Frankenstein refuses to help anymore because I think mean, they've got enough body parts or something and i think he just realizes the whole the whole game of it is a little bit mad but then pretorius um kidnaps elizabeth kidnaps dr frankenstein's missus and says look she's gonna be all right but you've got to help me finish this project finish this little pet project of mine yeah otherwise otherwise she's not gonna be all right so then they do the final the final preparations yeah. for the bride for the bride of frankenstein bride of frankenstein obviously who was played by the same actress who played mary shelley yeah earlier in the film, which I thought was a pretty cool little little thing, don't you think? And obviously, yeah, well, yeah budget constraints, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, Frankenstein's monster gets to sort of witness the birth, why, not the birth, but you know. The... Why the hell did they call it Bride of Frankenstein? Like, I don't know. It's, it's... It was not. There was pretty much nothing about the Bride of Frankenstein. Bride of Frankenstein was the last four minutes of this film. Yeah. Well, I was thinking it's the Frankenstein's monster that's getting the bride. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah, he's not making a wife for himself. He already no. has one. Yeah, Bride of Frankenstein. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, really. No. Uh, they meant Bride of Frankenstein's monster. But then again, like, it's like you said, the reason that there's all these like conf- conf- like confusion nowadays is because of these silly yeah. film titles, and they don't yeah. even know. What would have been a better title for this film? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Franken- <laughs> Frankenstein two. 
Franken Harder. I don't know. Yeah, Franken Harder. What <laughs> Frank? Yeah, Frank. Frankenstein Two. No little girls die in this one. Don't worry. <laughs> um, I would have just called it Franken Verter. The <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I would have called it, but uh, I'll, I'll think of that towards the end. Okay, Frankenstein so, smokes a pipe. I would have called it Frankenstein too. Like, and I think that's quite a good naming convention for things. Yeah. The second one. <laughs> the second coming. Yeah, episode two, volume two. I would have called it Frankenstein volume two. <laughs> okay, so uh, so go to the end. So um, so Frankenstein, yeah. So Frankenstein, the monster is now trying to force Frankenstein to make the make him a wife, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And then we get the same sort of scene as from the first one. It's alive. I think all the, it's all the same machinery. It's pretty much exactly the same, but the woman looks a lot better than he does. She hasn't got the square head. No. She's got she like hasn't a, got the square head. Like the lightning stripes down the side of the hair, which... Um, yeah. Her hair is like a big traffic cone on her head. Yeah. Um, <laughs> has she got the bolts in her neck? I don't, I don't can't remember. No, I can't remember if she got the bolts. Maybe just screws. Hey, look, in the Wikipedia entry, it says, uh, she's alive, alive, Henry cries. They remove her bandages and help her to stand. The Bride of Frankenstein, Dr. Pretorius declares. Again, yeah, Dr. Frankenstein is in the room. Like, surely he yeah. goes, will you please stop calling that guy yeah. Frankenstein? I've got a wife. I do not need another wife you made stole, out of body parts. You stole my wife for this yeah. exact thing to happen. Bride of Frankenstein. <laughs> no, that's not right. Bride of Frank, like just like they're talking over him. Why don't they just give Frankenstein's yeah. monster a name? I know, but it, like Dave or like maybe not Dave, maybe something Ke- like um... Keith. Frankenstein is a good name though. That's the thing. Frankenstein is a good catchy name. Franklin. I Frank- think they should have just called the other guy Henry throughout the film. Yeah, Doctor Henry. Ah, oh, it was just confusing. Do you know what I mean? Baron von Frankenstein, Frankenstein, Henry Frankenstein, Frankenstein's monster, Bride of Frankenstein. For El- God's sake, Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, so at the end, so she rejects. She wakes up. She's a much more perfect looking specimen, and she rejects Frankenstein because he's got a very really flat head. I think that's what that's, that's the, yeah. what happens anyway. Um. And then he starts saying like he says she hates me, um, and then I, I can't really can't remember. So he just, he, just, he just kicks off, doesn't he? I mean, he just kicks off, uh, and then there's there's a there's a in the in the laboratory there's a lever, a lever that if you pull destroys the whole laboratory. Because why oh, would you yeah. not? Why would you not keep one of those levers around when there's a shambling yeah. idiot man? monster walking around you giant just have hands. a lever wouldn't you yeah with yeah. giant hands you just go this lever well i've put this lever on the machine to destroy the whole laboratory in one big explosion well don't have that yeah. don't have that that's one bit you don't need no uh, or put a sign up don't pull this lever um, don't pull this bloody lever and then they, and then they escape oh uh, well, i think um frankenstein does i don't know about pretorius um no he doesn't so frank so frankenstein dr frankenstein and elizabeth escape um because yeah. Frank, because Frankenstein's monster lets him. He oh, sort okay. of says, "says you go, but we belong dead." Talking about nice. him. Nice. Talking about Bride of Frankenstein and talking about old Waspy Wasperson. Yeah, that's that's quite nice ending to it. Have you noticed? So, so they get out and, they just, and then they they look at the thing on fire or crumbling or whatever it is, and then it just says the end. Have you noticed that a lot of these older films? They don't have any like denouement. Like they they just finish like this, the the. The, and then it, they just finished like like the cat people. That kind of just like it just ended, and then it didn't have that sort of final few chapters, final couple of scenes yeah. that were like time for reflection. There's not exactly that. yeah. It's just just the end. But um, the end, and you'll bloody well deal with it. Yeah. Any questions you've got, forget it. Okay, so uh, this has been a bit of a longer one. Uh, how are you feeling? <laughs> How's the coffee working? I haven't got any coffee. I've what just got a lovely, a lovely bit of water in my little Star Star Wars cup. Oh man, I could have had some water. Uh, I had some coffee. It, it went, but uh, okay. So <laughs> it went. Uh, so directing style. Any jump scares? Any shitty fans moments? I think the music was really good. I love the title cards. 
on, yeah. the, on the intro and outro. I love the the openings when it, the, it doesn't start with the film itself. It starts like with a little preamble, which is quite nice. Um, mm-hmm. I love the, the photography, the black and white photography in the first one. Anyway, um, I, I definitely need to watch Bride of Frankenstein again. Not just yet, but at some point, just because I feel like I don't know what I don't. It's just my mind is just completely frazzled on that one. Um, mm. Maybe it's a bit late. I don't know. Let's get tired. I don't know. I don't know if there are any shit your pants moments. I mean, some bits were sort of quite creepy. Some bits were quite effective, like when Frankenstein shut the old little girl on, in the water. Um, yeah. And then when apart, Dr. Frankenstein apart from, broke his back, that, that to me, I did actually yeah. like wince a little bit for him. Yeah. Um, and then certain characters just screeching at the top of their lungs. They were shit your pants moments, but not not the good kind. They were yeah, just like, yeah. oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Turn the volume down on that. My God. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean they were good. Um, I think I preferred. Well, we'll do it in the grades, but I preferred one over the other, quite significantly actually. Yeah, um, yeah, I think I'm the same. Okay, should we do some trivia? Mm-hmm, yes. Okay, so uh, question the first. Uh, this Fritz character was actually based on Igor in the Mary Shelley Mary Shelley novel. Yeah, is that true? False. True. No, there, oh. was, there was never an ego, and there was never. Oh, a Fritz. see, I was going to say that you confused me. Yeah, uh, think... there was never an ego. So wh- when was ego created? I don't know. Apparently, um, Fritz ego. Fritz was like the prototype, and then as they sort of through various iterations, he turned into ego. Yeah, yeah. Um, so wrong, I'm afraid. Okay, in the original novel, Shelley describes a creature as having so you know he's like a, a gruesome sort of thing and dead body thing, and, and the ones we know him as. But in the original novel, she describes him as having flowing hair, yellow, almost translucent skin, glowing eyes and black lips, and a rocking bod. True or false? True. Well, she, she said <laughs> oh. some of it. She didn't say he had a rocking bod. Oh, yeah, see, I knew. I, see, I, I, that. <laughs> I bet he did have a rocking bod there. Yeah, but I think so that's the said, idea. So I think he, so he was meant to be a quite handsome looking dude. Black lips. Well, black lips. So yeah, black. Fashion. So yeah, bl- so yeah, black lit, <laughs> yellow, almost translucent skin. This Ooh. is yeah, long hair. Flowing. He sounds, yeah. he sounds crazy. He sounds like um, someone off of RuPaul's Drag Race. As you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> rocking bod. Obviously, was the yeah. key to that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Shelley wrote the story as part of a competition between friends to see who could write the best horror story. Um, Lord Byron was present. Um, which uh, sort of makes things sort of unfair, but she won, I think. <laughs> true. Yeah, that's true. It's cool. I, yeah. So this is what they were, I think essentially they were doing at the start of Bride of Frankenstein was sort of playing into that whole thing where a group of friends just used to get around and tell stories to each other and stuff, which is cool. Um, mm. Okay, so this isn't the first adaptation of the book. A 16-minute short film uh, was a loose adaptation put together by Thomas Edison at some point, he did say, back in the day. I know this wasn't the first version. I know there was something else. Back in the day, not even give me a date. It didn't say. Yo, JK. <laughs> yes, true. It's going to be a long time ago, though. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Thomas Edison made a short film. Uh, as part right. of Edison Productions, he used to make films that w- weren't, they weren't very good. <laughs> Maybe they were at the time. I'm sure they were Seen them all, have you? No, I have. I, yeah. I saw a bit of this one, and I was like, okay. Um, so, uh, Frankenstein. Uh, opened in New York City at the Mayfair Theatre, December the fourth, nineteen thirty-one, and grossed fifty-three dollars in one week. Big bucks. True. It was, it was fifty-three thousand dollars in one week. But, what, did uh, I, what did you say? Fifty-three dollars. Oh. oh no! <laughs> and then you you quite. Dryly said, late. "True, yeah, it's getting, <laughs> it's getting late." <laughs> I didn't quite, I didn't quite know what was going on. Sorry. <laughs> true, just saying true or false. Yeah. True. Fifty percent. Anyway. Okay, so, false. dude, um, it's getting late in the day. My mind's a bit frazzled. You're, you look, you seem fine actually. Um, <laughs> we need to grade these films. Yeah. Grade. So would you, you give this the same grade, or would you? No, no, I don't think I would. I think I would go like I was with either of them. I wasn't a huge fan. Like I know for a fact, I'll probably never want to watch either of them again. Okay. But but that's not that's not me being being mean. 
you having a little yawn there. It's not me being mean. Um, I think I Come think on, I was bedtime, like, I could... <laughs> Come on, it's bedtime now. Now it's dinner time. Now it's yeah. toilet time. Now it's um ted now dead time. Bath and Fire bed. Time. Come on. Bath right. and bed. Let me wash your scrotum. Um, <laughs> so, but, but obviously I can understand again how iconic these this film is now how iconic the characters are and how even though it's a film from 1931 it still stands up and still had me interested and engrossed albeit a little bit annoyed by certain elements so i'd probably go for like a c for frankenstein yeah it's, i think c for me is like my enjoyed it didn't love it sort of score yeah not a massive fan but i toler- bloody tolerated it and bride i'd probably go for a d okay you didn't tolerate it. No, I just don't think for me it felt like it didn't elaborate. I know obviously Frankenstein's monster changed. It didn't elaborate enough on the story. It felt a little bit like cobbled together and I yeah. didn't really understand. There were, the Only the stuff with the little blind man, I guess, really felt different. So I don't know why I, don't know why I keep calling him a little blind man. Was he little? In my head he was really small. I think he was small compared to Frankenstein's monster. Because Frankenstein's a bloody great old beast, isn't he? Yeah. Right, okay, yeah, that's it. That's it. So I, I'm going to give um, Frankenstein the first one a B plus. I think, although like it's a uh, quite slow pace, like today, like today's standards, um, I still thought it was really good. And I think the reason I quite enjoyed that one is because, like I said, I've never really understood the appeal of Frankenstein until watching this one. And now I suddenly, and I think I finally sort of clicked. I'm like, oh, that's what it, <laughs> that's what it is. That's what it's all about. Um, so yeah, I'll give I'll give them a B plus. I'll give Bride of Frankenstein a C minus. I think just because it felt like the same film, but like, uh, yeah, not quite as focused to me. Uh, okay, so um, what's the next film we are doing? Um, I think we are. Oh, so we're next doing. Up- we're going to do an honourable mention or like a new release next week, right? Yeah, because I think the next on the list is Dracula from 1931. Yeah. And we did a Dracula episode not not too long ago, so I think maybe if we do something different for next week. <laughs> something after Ben's cliff. Something right. after my cliff. <laughs> well, no, just to keep, I guess just to keep this podcast um, fresh and interesting and, you know, just uh, yeah. keep people on their toes. What's next on the list? Oh, no, what's this coming out? <laughs> yeah. Is one coming out this week? No. <laughs> Here's this coming. Out. Yeah, so we're gonna choose one. I think if we if if we do one of these, we might if the one we don't do, we'll do again in the future possibly. Yeah, that sounds good. So yeah, uh, it basically depends on whether if I get a chance to go see this film before Sunday and we're in record next, which is Alien Covenant, which you are a fan of, I think, and um, some reviewers out there aren't digging. So it'll be interesting. And if we don't do that, we'll be doing Get Out. So it'll be one of those two. Yeah. Get out. Get out yeah. was, was pretty great. So, either or oh, I'm, I'm excited to do that. Okay, so um, this show is brought to you by the Story Studio Hawk and Cleaver. Head over to hawkandcleaver.com and grab a free book. Become a patron over at patreon.com forward slash hawk and cleaver. Thanks to Kovach Kalman for our theme music. Thanks to ACAS for hosting the show. Thanks to the listeners. If you enjoyed the show, give us a five star rating and review in iTunes. And remember to hit subscribe. Also, go to Facebook and search for Horror Hangout, and there'll be like a little group of people there like a private group we talk about horror films and stuff it's quite cool um, and thanks to my co-host Ben for being a real horror dude thanks for p- pulling a double because we missed last week because we're busy dudes and um, we did a double today and uh, I think I'm, I'm feeling it <laughs> I don't know about we, did, we, we did a double ender and uh, yeah I'm feeling it <laughs> <laughs> what about the podcast are you feeling that as well or just a yeah but not as much okay <laughs> Just the pipe. <laughs>